Hey everyone, welcome to today's edition of One Single Story, where each weekday we offer a brief lesson from a section of today's reading, then we examine a single relevant question that passage points us to. Today I'm joined by Alyssa Bream, and we're looking at a passage from Galatians chapter 6. So it was very likely that Paul had someone who was helping him write the letter of Galatians. It was common for letters to be recited out loud while someone took dictation, but in Greek-style letters like this one, the author would usually close the letter by writing a summary of the contents of the letters in his own hands. So Paul refers to that in verse 11. The summary of this letter contains some of the most beautifully written theology in the New Testament. As for me, may I never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, my interest in this world has been crucified and the world's interest in me has also died. There is no boasting about salvation. Performance and keeping the rules of the law simply cannot provide salvation. No one can brag about being saved by their own strength. You see, real salvation is transformation. It doesn't matter whether we've been circumcised or not. What counts is whether we have been transformed into a new creation. May God's peace and mercy be upon all who live by this principle. They are the new people of God, verses 15 and 16. Don't don't miss the implication here of this verse. Paul states that those who have become transformed into a new creation are the new people of God. In other words, the promises of Abraham have been fulfilled in Christ, and all who trust in him make up the new people of God. The believers in Christ are now in a covenant with God stronger and deeper than the covenant that God made with Abraham. This covenant has been sealed and ratified by Christ. So um, the cross is a... Roman instrument of execution, Alyssa, and much it's much like the electric chair because that's what we use uh, today, or lethal injection is what we use, but the electric chair would be something that most people could relate to. How would it change our perspective if we read that phrase, may I never boast about anything except the electric chair of Jesus? Would, would, would that change how you process things? I think in some ways, yes, and in some ways, no, because I do think we we have glorified the cross and made it this beautiful thing where it's olive wood and it's shined and it's from Israel, you know, and like it's we necklaces. have, right, it's on necklaces. It is something that we have made to be pretty. Um, and the electric chair is something that we would view as like, we would look at it and be like, oh, like if, I don't know, I'm trying to think if I've ever seen like in a museum or something like a real electric chair that has killed people. But I would be like, if I was to walk by one, I'd be like, be it would, I, it would, yeah, it would be really weird to like look at that and to think about the people who died on that. And like, it would, it would not be a pleasant thing. I'm thinking of when I went through um, like the, the African American History Museum in Washington and some of the the slavery implements that were there and thinking about how they were used and just being horrified. Um, and that's good to be horrified by that because that's that's what you're supposed to do. I do think though, in some ways, the the cross here is 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 just saying like, except in the death of Jesus. I don't know, like maybe that's and so I think it's in the same way that I would view the cross, the electric chair, it's the pain, the humiliation, I think, is what the cross brought. Because it wasn't just being killed when you died on the cross. The The crosses would be set up intentionally on the roadway so that mm-hmm. anybody who was walking by it would be able to... It was meant to be a deterrent, to... just like the death penalty is right. in our country. Right. I mean, you would just be walking by. I mean, I can imagine that people were walking by with their kids and, you know, to to market or whatever, you know, to, to go visit somebody and there would just be people dying on the side of the road. Like that is, it is utterly horrific. And I think we do, we have polished it um, and made it something that is glorious because the outcome of the cross was the resurrection. And so when we think of the cross, we think of the resurrection. And um, <laughs> I'm I'm thinking of um, my four-year-old wanted to pray before bed the other night. 
and they prayed and uh dear jesus help it to be easter so you can die and i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I'm laughing right now. I'm not laughing at the cross. No, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> but I think um, we have sanitized that death where a four-year-old is like just talking about it, you know? And and so I think getting that unsanitized version and thinking about that, uh, that's what we do here with Journey to the Cross. We try to make it, you know, we, we like to gloss over the death part of Jesus sometimes and just be super excited on Easter Sunday. But we have to understand the humiliation and the pain and all of the other aspects that Jesus would have been going through on that cross. Maybe we get an electric chair for next year's journey to the cross. <laughs> <laughs> how weird, so when you think about it, how weird would it be for you to boast in the electric chair, right? It, it would be weird. So how how radical of a statement is he telling them to boast only in the cross it is weird and i i i'm i don't know if i could put myself fully in their shoes mm. and know because what they would so, think it's such a foreign concept to it um they would have been a lot closer to it so it would have been something that was weird but it wouldn't have been so foreign to them because they would have seen people who had been killed that way so i i i do agree that boasting in it probably is is weirder in some ways to them in other ways since they were closer to it maybe it wasn't as weird i don't know i don't know either you know that that concept of boasting in something that that brought death even I think it would be very difficult for us to boast in in something like the electric chair, you know, yeah. that that clearly brings death because we have we're so far removed from that cross thing, you know. I I would guess that crosses probably were used some here in this country early. You um, think so? I, I I would assume that being burned at the stake would have been very similar to okay. hanging on a cross. I would assume. I could be wrong, but I, I would assume. And obviously, even as late as the last 75 years, there's probably some cross burning going on, whether people, you know, were own them or not i i don't I, I don't my history isn't that polished to be able to know but i do know there was cross burning you know mm -hmm. during the um integration time you know that that the, the, those were challenging times but and you know i i think there is a reason why the cross becomes the symbol you know the t the empty tomb doesn't become the symbol the the cross becomes the symbol of christianity because without the death there is no resurrection and without the understanding that that was the sacrifice that needed to be made and we're told i think there's so many we're not told to rise again daily <laughs> right but we are to told to yeah. crucify ourselves daily I might have had an epiphany right then, you know, that, that might have that might have sh helped shape my eternal security um, conversation. But, you know, when we're saved, we're saved. But there's a constant need to crucify our fleshly desires, those sinful things that keep cropping up. And, you know, we've talked about it several times this week. The things that we're crucifying today are different than the thing. They should be different right. than what we were crucifying you know, 10 years ago or a year ago. And um, I, I wish I was better. I think I am getting better. And I don't know whether it is, I don't know whether it's my age. Um, like I can see the end. I see the road narrowing. I know that the time is shorter. Um, That urge in me to tr get past any inhibitions that I have and any um, shortcomings I might feel like I have to try to make sure that people make that 
decision for Christ, you know, to 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 follow after Him, it, it becomes more and more prevalent uh, today. But you know, I I hear people. He, he Paul talks about I only preach Jesus and Him crucified, and I, I hear preachers they only. They, I mean, I know some preachers they only preach. If you hear them preach a message, it's going to be on the cross. That's how they're, they they want to point people to the cross. Um. And I, I have about a thousand questions running through my mind right this minute as to why it becomes the cross that we preach and not the resurrection. If we're looking at it theologically, the resurrection that we experience is our baptism. Mm-hmm. And so we get to, I mean, like that's the way at least I viewed it as symbolism is you're dying to yourself when you go under the water and a new person is coming up. Um, I So I think that that happens once for us as in that baptism. And then it's just, I, yeah, that it's just crucifying ourselves because there's so much that we need to kill off and, and, weed out of our own lives. Um, And I think human nature is that things will grow. Mm -hmm. And so that resurrection is kind of almost a natural part of our life, that things that as we weed, the the Holy Spirit will help things grow, but we can't do anything to resurrect ourselves. We can do weeding, we can't do resurrection. Mm -hmm. We can crucify, we can kill things off, but the growth has to come from the Holy Spirit. Well, thank you for joining us today on this edition of One Single Story. We hope you'll be back with us tomorrow, excuse me, Monday, as we resume our conversation around our daily Bible reading.